we now come to the item which we all of us, all of our senior members like very much and the junior members will be paid respects to them. May I request Dr. Chandra Shekhar, the senior? This month we are honoring Dr. V. Krishnamurthy, a very senior member of us. I request Dr. Chandra Shekharan to read the plan. Indian Medical Association, Chennai Kodambakam branch, Lifetime Achievement Award, on this day, the 24th June 2012, this citation is awarded to Dr. V. Krishnamurthy for outstanding contribution to society in the field of medicine. Awarded MBBS in 1970 from Government Medical College, Mohanda, Haryana, Punjab University, now known as Pantish Sharma Postgraduate Medical Institute. After housemanship, he trained in orthopedics and internal medicine and cardiology for six months. He is at Bennington Hospital, now Ram Manohar Lohia Hospital. In 1987, awarded MD Doctorate of Medicine and Cardiology from Society for Advanced Medical Medicine, the College of Medicine, Government of India, New Delhi. In 1990 to 1991, obtained DO from Legal Institute of Ophthalmology Medical Medical College. In 1972, as a special trainee in cardiology in Maulana Azad Medical College, learned the procedure of cardiac association. In the stint at SVA, Food Corporation of India, he got attached to Professor Abdan Ali, gained experience and individually performed the cardiac association and angioplasty. Selected to CT his case as insurance medical officer at ESA Hospital. He served in Food Corporation of India for 26 years from 1978, sorting as medical officer and to the level of Zone and Chief Medical Officer. Initiated the landmark study on the effect of garlic and sunflower oil with interesting results published in House Journal, Asian Medical News, and Indian Journal of Medical Medicine. Today, she is continuing service from his private clinic at Madipa. He is a life member of IMA in Kodambakam with 100% attendance in service for over 70 years. Association Chennai Fordham Welcome Bags. Feel proud to honor a diet in the medical field. Aslam. Money one. I request Aslam to Garland with a shot. Sir, please place the camera. Uh, this uh, 
these various companies, garlic transactions, etc., they, they wanted that uh, I must study it in uh, guinea pigs. Hmm. But uh, since uh, I don't have any facility in uh, Food Corporation of India for providing uh, guinea pig study, and finally, few of my patients, they developed uh, diabetes and uh, <coughs> angina, and uh, one, one of them got severe MI also in uh, six months, uh, six to eight months. And, uh, and uh, he went in for bypass surgery. Then my that, uh, association leader they complained to the managing director that uh, I am uh, making FCA patients as guinea pig and I should stop it, stop this. And uh, there was a letter from uh, health minister and uh, uh, from my managing director to my uh, to our general manager, zone manager that I must stop this and leave it to the. If anybody gets any problem with their heart, let them uh, go to. Uh, Full hospital or Ranchanda hospital or any other hospital, I take out or we can send them to abroad, abroad also for better treatment. So I sincerely advise not that one should not take garlic at all, one should not take it daily in vegetarian food. If you browse it in the uh, internet, all that Mediterranean rice are all non veg only. They have not tried it in vegetarian diet. Only in India only we are. Actually, more vegetarians are there compared to any other countries. So that's why uh, three communities in India: Brahmin community, Buddhist community, and Marwadi community, Mahave, uh, Jain community. They don't take garlic at all. That's why even in our temples, we don't make any garlic preparations. Garlic biryani or whatever, Only ordinary pongal only we make it. This may be one of the many reasons. I want that. Thank you, Mr. President. It was indeed a breakfast to honor you. We will now proceed with the rest of the topics of the CME. May I request Dr. Nandakumar to come and take the stage. Multi vessels coronary blockage. Once again, I would like to repeat the talk is for 18 minutes, after which you will get a small overall reminder. Then we can take questions for two minutes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks very much. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, my colleague, Benji Kumar, who's taking a fantastic talk. I'm going to try and follow it up with another one on coronary uh, disease as such. Uh, we're just trying to find the right uh, presentation because there's quite a few in there. I'm hoping that it will be up soon. Uh, basically, the premise of my talk is going to be all about uh, coronary, multi, coronary angioplasty in multi-vessel disease. Uh, why we do this and why now we are talking about it. And uh, the basic reason for this is that with the change in technology now, that um, over time multi-vessel angioplasty uh, will take over many of the patients who are now doing it for bypass surgery. So, up to 80, 85 percent of patients are going to end up with stents. This is what's happening in the Western countries, and it's happening in India now. Maybe not in Chennai much, but it's it's on its way. Uh, and because this has changed the world of coronary disease, I thought it's a relevant topic to talk about. But I'm going to talk about it right from the beginning, and I'll try to keep it short because I'm aware that there are other talks after me. So can we just try and go to the topic, please? Okay, it doesn't matter. I'll just go with it. So basically, it's multiverse line because it was bypass uh, surgery. Uh, okay, next, please. And uh, where did it all start? Now, if you go right back, right, right back, 2000 BC, uh, India is right there. Uh, that's the time when uh, bladders used to be catheterized with follow tubes. And this is the basis on which the whole thing started, and you ask me now, uh, as what well, did originate some, somewhere far ago in India. And then following on, they were using polar reads in, in Egypt to look at cadavers looking at glass. Next place. Uh, and then there's a big gap. Nothing much happened until the 1700s when Hales first used brass and glass tubes and measured cardiac pressure. Uh, the poor horse there was for, you know, they used horses at the time and, you know, tricky of a goose to, to measure pressures. Uh, 1844, Bernard for the first time coins the term cardiac catheterization, first ever time when this was used. Next, please. 
these are great men. These are some of the great, great men of Connolly, Angiogram, Angioplasty. I mean, we kind of don't talk much about them now, but I think it's very important that we remember these people. Dr. Forsman, uh, he was a physician in Austria. And in 1929, people thought it wasn't safe to put anything inside the heart. You didn't put anything inside the heart, you would die. And he wanted to prove that you could put a tube inside the heart and you would live. And he used to self get his rights. He anesthetized himself, passed a very thin tube all the way up to the atrium, and walked down to the radiology department, took an x-ray, just to prove that the x-ray, the tube was in the heart. Uh, and he was dismissed for this, uh, for his efforts. Uh, I think he tried this for about 17 times. I mean, he lost all the weights in the arm. Uh, he couldn't do it anymore. But in 1956, many, many years down the line, he received the Nobel Prize for his great discovery. Because after that, people started putting tubes and measuring pressures. And then comes the next big, uh, you know, the next great man, Dr. Soames.